Rich People Problem ang excerpt by Kevin Kwan. Characters Bettina Ortiz, Y. Minya, Herman Otters, Y. Minya, Julie, and Alfred Chang. Bettina Ortiz, Y. Minya was not accustomed to waiting. A former Miss Venezuela and Miss Universe runner-up. Of course, the exceedingly bronze strawberry blonde was these days the wife of Miami Auto Parts tycoon Herman Ortiz Y. Minya. At every restaurant, she chose to grace with her presence. She always greeted with reverence and risked to the exact table she desired. Today, she wanted a corner table on the terrace at Sip Sip, her favorite lunch spot on Harbor Island. She wanted to sit on one of the comfy orange canvas director's chair and stare out at the gently lapping turquoise waters while eating her Cali Caesar salad. But there was a large noisy group taking up the entire terrace and they didn't seem in much hurry to leave. Bettina fumped as she glared at the tourists happily severing their lunch in the sun. Look how tacky they were. The woman overly tamp, wrinkled and saggy. None of them properly lifted or buttocks. She felt like walking up to their table and handing out her dermatologist business cards. And the men were even worse. All dressed and all rumpled shirt and short, wearing the cheap straws hat sold at the trinket shop on Dunmore Street. Why did such people have to come here? The three and a half mile long paradise with its pristine pink sand beaches was one of the best kept secrets in the Caribbean. A haven for the very rich fell with quaint leather wood houses painted in shades of sherbet, charming bouquet, chic ocean front, mansions turned into inns and five star restaurants to rebel sand barts. Feeling that she had been patient long enough, Bettina stormed into the kitchen. The fringe on her crocheted poochie capped and top shaking furiously. As she made a beeline for the woman with a shock of pixie cut blonde hair manning the main stove. Julie, honey, what's the diablo? I've waited more than 15 minutes for my table. Sorry, Bettina, it's been one of those days. The party of 12 on the terrace showed up first just before you did. But the terrace is your prime spot. Why on earth? Bettina huffed, although secretly she was rather impressed by people with big title. From the kitchen window, she surveyed the party assembled on the terrace with new eyes. These Aristo British types were such a strange breed. Sure, they had their saddle row suits and their heirloom tiaras, but when they traveled, they looked so painfully from pee. It was only then that Bettina noticed three tan, well-built men in fitted white t-shirts and black Kevlar pants sitting at the adjacent table. The guys weren't eating but sat watchfully, sipping glasses of seltzer water. I assume that's the Duke's security detail? They couldn't be more obvious. Don't they know that we're all millionaires here on Brulin, and this isn't how we roll? Actually, those bodyguards belong to the Duke's special guest. They did a whole sweep of the restaurant before the party arrived. They even searched my walk-in freezer. See that Chinese fellow seated at the end of the table? Bettina squinted through her Dior Stay sunglasses at the portly, balding, 70-something Asian man dressed in a nondescript white short-sleeved golf shirt and gray trousers. Oh, I didn't even notice him. Am I supposed to know who he is? Uh, that's over shame. Julie said in a harsh tone. He looks like their chauffeur. Doesn't he look like that guy that used to drive Jane Wyman around Falcon Crest? Julie, who was trying to focus on sharing a cut of tuna to perfection, shook her head a tight lip smile. From what I hear, that chauffeur is the most powerful man in Asia. What's his name again? You have reached the end. Thank you. And you may realize that everything isn't all about you.